Hey everyone, welcome to another game development episode where we're recreating the Legend of Zelda in Game Maker. In the last episode, we created our first enemy, and today we're going to add the ability to kill them. Two quick updates before we get started. First, I'm trying new ways to improve these tutorials by making them shorter with the same amount of content, with the hopes that this will make it easier to follow along. Uh, this is my first try at it, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Second, People have been asking me if I can make the code, sprites, and GameMaker files available for download, and I've done just that. I've set up a Patreon page where I'm posting all of this material for each episode in an easy-to-download zip file. The link is in the description, and I'll provide a clickable annotation here as well, so go ahead and check that out. All right, let's start with an overview. Enemies have something called health points, or HP for short. That will be set to a number depending on how hard you want it to be to kill the enemy. Our weapon, in this case the sword, will have a certain amount of damage it can do to the enemy. When our sword object collides with the enemy object, we'll subtract the damage points from the enemy HP. If the HP is equal to or below zero, the enemy dies and we'll draw a death animation. If the enemy's HP isn't at or below zero, then we're going to make the enemy invincible for further attacks for a short period of time. In our case, about 30 frames. You may hear something called invincibility frames or iframes, that's what we call this. One reason we do this is so the enemy doesn't continue to take damage on each frame that the sword is hitting them, otherwise they would likely just die instantaneously. During the invincibility time we're going to make the enemy flash so the player can tell that it hit the enemy and know when it's no longer invincible and ready to be attacked again. Okay we're going to start this all off by adding damage to our swords. We're going to go to our sword object, we're going to go to the create event, Grab the code here and we're going to add a variable called damage equal to two. This is how much damage our sword is going to do to enemies. Next, we're going to go and create our, in, our enemy death sprite. So we're going to go to sprites, we're going to go to enemies, right click, create sprite, and we're going to call it sprite enemy death. And we'll click on the edit sprite. And we'll go to File, Add from Strip, and we're going to choose our Enemy Death PNG. Open that up, and we need to do a couple settings. One is there's 12 images on here, so we're going to set the number of images to 12. There's 12 per row, and the image width and height are going to be 16. And we're done with that. Click OK, and then we're going to click the check mark. We'll center the origin, and click OK. So that's all we need to do for the, the sprite. Now we need to go set up this object. So we're going to right click enemies again, create object, we're going to call it object enemy death. And we'll set the sprite to the sprite that we just created. And now we're going to right click and the events, we're going to do a create, go to the control tab, drag over the code. And here we're just going to set the image speed to equal to 0.5. We're going to slow the image down to about half of what its normal speed would be. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click, add event, and we're going to go to other, and there's something called animation end. So we'll do that. We'll drag the code over. And when the animation of this is done, we're going to destroy this object because we don't need it anymore. Now we're going to create our parent enemy object that's going to contain all the code for um, collision. So we're going to create object. We're going to go, we'll call it object parent or PAR enemy. And we're going to add to the create event. Go to create. And then in the control tab, we'll drag over the code. And we're going to set up a HP variable. We'll set it to zero. A damage variable, which is going to be zero. And the iframes, the invincibility frames is equal to zero. So when we're done with that, we'll go ahead and close that. And the next thing we're going to do is check for the collision. So let's right click, add event, and we're going to go to collisions. And we're going to check for collision with the object sword. Drag the code over. And here we're going to say if the iframes are equal to zero, so as long as it's not the enemy's not invincible, then we're going to do something. In this case, we're going to go ahead and set the iframes to 30. And then we're gonna we're gonna subtract from the HP 
equal to the other damage. So this is the damage of the sword. The object that we're colliding with is what other is. So now that we've set the iframes to 30, it will not ch it will not run this code again until iframes equal zero again. So we're going to add a step event, drag some code over, and this is where we're going to decrement the value of the iframes. So we're going to check to see if iframes is greater than zero, and if so, um, subtract one. We'll do that by iframes minus minus. Whoops. Okay. So we'll do minus minus to subtract a, a one from the frames. And then if the HP is less than or equal to zero, this is when we want to destroy the enemy. And we'll do instance destroy. And so we're done with that. So this will, this will check to see if we're out of HP for the enemy and destroy them. Now we're going to do a destroy event. So on destroy event, we want to create that little animation for the death scene. So we're going to say instance create at the X and Y value of where the enemy is. And we're going to call the object enemy death. So now that we call this, when the enemy dies, the little anime, the death animation is going to uh, show up and it's all going to go away. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the draw event. And this is where we're going to make the enemy flash. So pull over to the code. So what we're going to check here is if the iframes are greater than zero and we're going to do something kind of funny here. We're going to take what, however many iframes we're at. So let's say iframes is at three and we're going to do a mod of it, um, which means divide by three. And if that is equal to zero, there's no remainder. We're going to, we're not going to do anything. And the reason we're not going to do anything here is because we don't want the sprite to show up else we're going to draw ourselves. So by not having the code there in that, that first part of the if statement, um, basically the enemy sprite's not gonna show up. Otherwise it will show up. Go ahead and click the check mark. We're done with this, click okay. So we've created our parent object. Now we need to apply this to our actual enemy object. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our Octorock and we're going to set the parent to be the enemy parent or the object parent enemy. And we're going to go into the create event and we're going to do something. We're going to call something special called event inherited. And all that means is call the parent objects code for the same event. So it's going to go call that create event. Um, we're going to go ahead and set our enemies uh, HP to four and damage to two. Damage is going to be used later in another episode of how much damage it does to the player. Then we're going to go to the step event and we're going to call the event inherited as well. And this is going to call the step event code. And this is all we need to do to make it possible for enemies to be killed by our sword. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so let's go hit him. Oh, I missed. Hit is blinking. That's great. That's the first thing. And on the second hit, you saw that little animation. So let's do it one more time. He's blinking on the first hit and then he dies on the second one. So boom, you guys now have working code for enemy health and it collides with our sword. And that's the end of this episode. Uh, thanks again, as always for watching, subscribing, liking the videos. Please give me some feedback in the comments about how you thought this episode went. Um, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.